In 2013, Dangote announced that he was going to be building the largest single train refinery in the world, basically, with a capacity of 650,000 barrels per day. And that project was purported to cost about $9 billion and last a couple of years, four or five years, and they're projecting 2017, 2018 for it to be fully on stream. Almost 10 years later and eight failed launches, the company has come once again to announce that they are going to be launching the refinery on December 2022. According to the popular old game, can the real Dangote refinery launch date stand up? Why is it taking so long? Why are there so many botched launch dates? And why does it keep getting postponed? That's what I'm going to be talking about today on the show and how it affects your real estate investment in that area. Welcome to the show. Around 2017, when I joined Real Estate 2017, actually I just started learning about it. And the person that actually talked me into it started from Ibejuleki. And I actually thought that Lagos Real Estate started and ended in Ibejuleki. Everything was Ibejuleki, Dangote, um, Refinery, Dano Milk, Free Trade Zone, all of that, all of that. And um, they were telling us by then that the refinery is going to launch this year, next year. And since that year, every time I've been hearing the the refinery is going to launch very soon, next year, next year, next year, next year, different days have been coming and going. So what really is happening? What's the reason why there are so many launch dates? What's the reason why it seems to be a very elusive dream that the Dangote refinery, that is the major major, major investment in the free trade zone and uh, it has gone from the purported $9 billion and is running in cost of over $15 billion there in the lucky free trade zone. Why is it costing so much and why is it taking so much time to launch? Okay, so first of all, I think that a reason why this refinery projects and these large scale type of projects like this take so long is that sometimes people may overestimate the technicality involved and you know, as far as I'm concerned this is one of the biggest of this magnitude that's been done so it's kind of a novel one and you know you can only make so much permutations and combinations but the reality on the ground would always be different so I think that Dangote and his team overestimated how much it would cost and you know how much technical know-how and manpower and cost would go into this and also at the very beginning the first few years you know they had to start constructing their own roads and the the roads were just not done because it was a very remote place so they had to take on the whole job of constructing their own roads which of course took some time and apart from the road the waterway as well, the Atlantic Ocean, the equipments they were bringing in from outside the country couldn't be birthed at um, the seaport that we had. Our seaports were much, much, much too, too, too shallow. And I think he mentioned one of those equipments that was deeper, 10 times the capacity of what the other seaports in Lagos, the Tinkan and the Apapa port could do. So, he had to make his own jetty and of course that took another you know took quite some time as well to be able to gather the resources and be able to make his own makeshift jetty to be able to accept some of his equipment that were coming that were very very massive so that took some time out of the purported and planned time for the refinery also as well like I said, since it's a very novel project and people like the Chinese, the Indians have been doing this for 30, 40 years, he needed a lot of manpower. He needed a lot of 
expatriates, foreign expertise for this. And he shipped a lot of them down here. But then again, the pandemic happened in 2020. Don't forget, the pandemic happened. And when the pandemic happened, most nationals had to evacuate their people. So all of his expatriates, you know, went back home. And in fact, people just even stopped working. People weren't working as much. And in fact, the oil industry was heavily hit. Low prices, crashing prices, apart from, you know, the fact that people were not just there and people that were on ground couldn't do that. So that was a whole stall. And it didn't just affect Dangote Refinery, it affected most industries in the world because people were not able to work as much. The expatriates were going back and, you know, uh, they had to, we had to wait all this whole time of them after going back. Then the things started going back to normal. They started coming back in in trinkles, in sprinkles, and then they came back before work could continue. And also bear in mind the fact that because he was also bringing some of the equipments that were needed from China and from other places, and that that essentially stopped as well. So he couldn't bring these equipments that he needed to keep on fast-tracking the project and keep on moving the project forward. So that was stalled for a very long time. And in fact, the pandemic affected global supply chains and it was just a very, 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 um, you know, hard time. It was not an easy time. This is really not something that anybody planned for. So then again, that that caused a stall in the in the plan and the whatever that they were doing for the refinery and he kept on pushing 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 the dates further but nobody said that apart from all of these issues nobody said that building the world's largest refinery single train refinery with a capacity of 60,000 650,000 barrels was going to be a walk in the park was going to be being kick but then again some people cited that that might be a problem on its own because you have a project management issue here. You know, um, I know I did a little chemical engineering back then, and I know that reactors work with your know, material balance and everything that has to do with that. So people suggested that why couldn't Dang- Dangote start with like probably a hundred thousand barrel per day capacity, and then as time goes on, he's eventually scales it up scales the 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 product production scale your reactor capacity and everything i don't know the technicality involved that would have made that possible but you know uh why now you're in an agile economy you start with the pilots and then you start putting new um features adding it up you know that's that's actually the the whole brass tech I don't know if that applies again to that, but that could have actually been an idea. You know, you really start small because even the, the this December that they plan to start, they're not going to hit the 650 to the get at um, running. They're going to start with like 500 and something thousand barrels and it was killed. That's what they said. So if you could actually start with 500 and something thousand barrels, couldn't you have said that with a lesser amount? And as time goes on, you keep on scaling because... As, as time is going and as time is passing, I read that the debt burden is about, I think, $7 billion and he's servicing it with like $700 million every year. Uh, he's not been able to turn a profit with that. In, instead, he's accru- accruing debts as time goes on. So they really, really need to hit the ground going because a lot of, a lot of the developments around the hinge around the refinery kicking off and kicking off in the full and full, full steam. But then again, one reason why I am led to believe that Langote Refinery, if it doesn't start 2022, it will start at least the first quarter of 2023, is because I believe that Langote Refinery has, you know, for a large extent and largely, largely, he has enjoyed government patronage for since forever. And, you know, the government has put in, in fact, the government bought 25% equity in Dangote Refinery, although he has come out to say that only one third about one third of that is cash. The other one is in discounts for crude and also profits from his company. 
And he said if he did not believe in the project, he would have asked for all cash. But also, I don't know if that's propaganda as well. So um, the government has put in so, 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 so much into this. Also, it seems that they have actually forgot about forgotten about other players and focused mainly on Dangote and also MFLE has come out several times to say the Dangote refinery is going to reduce our uh, forex earnings the uh, foreign exchange the amount of the foreign exchange that we our foreign earnings the forex that we we send about 40 percent yeah on import bills is going to reduce it drastically because we get mostly for petroleum products and the other petrochemicals and also even fertilizer and uh, the rest. So he said that um, they have been holding on to Dangote refinery is going to make the Naira better, it's going to improve the economy and I am sure they'll be willing to prove a point before they leave so they will give him massive, massive support. Uh, he said, "Those that <laughs> those that say we should float the naira, let's see what they're going to say when it all starts up." So I think this has been this government silver bullet to solving the naira issue. Dangote refinery, Dangote refinery, Dangote refinery. So I don't think that they will be in a hurry to leave or want to leave before that, because that can also be a propaganda point that they latch onto. To come back into office, that's their party. That their party to come back into office. But be that as it may, those are the reasons as well. And okay, he has also had to train lots of the local, um, local, local professionals. Take some of them to India and also scale up drastically. If from like twenty something thousand, he was scaling up the workforce to like fifty something thousand. So all of this training, all of this, you know, because it's all novel. It hasn't happened before. All of these add to the time that it takes for the implementation and for the refinery to actually be completed from um, per the roadmap of their project and be fully functioning. But then again, what does it tell you? It, because um, if as the Dangote refinery has still been going on like from 2017 you can see 2018 2019 2020 2021 you can see how progressively things have been been added and all of that you know if it has affected the real estate the real estate's value around there such that properties are going from 10 million 18 million even 30 million in that axis you can imagine what it would mean and what it would be when it starts off late this year actually they said it was going to start first quarter of this year but then again as usual they came and they shifted it again to the end of this year december 2022 but that's just a brief I don't know if this is brief, but that's just an overview of why I think Dangote Refinery is taking so much time and also why I feel like it is going to be delivered this year or early next year. So you know what that means. You, you prepare yourself. And I'm going to do another video because I largely feel like as an investor, because this is a real estate, um, this is a real estate advisory channel. And that's what we do here. You know, there is so much contention about the land around Nangote Refinery and Axis, especially places like Oshoroko, Ori, Goringon. I don't know. <laughs> I always find it so hard to pronounce it. And especially places that are directly facing the expressway. And also that I've done a video about that. It is not very, very advisable to leave close to a refinery except you're planning on making it a commercial place which is fine most people they, the stuff that they do that are very close to the road they are commercial but just make sure you're not getting scammed of the properties and all of the places in that axis that free trade free trade zone axis the other quadrant the northeastern the northwestern and the southwestern that are close to the refinery they are going to gain from the launch so you know you should be Positioning yourself if you've already been investing in the Bejeleki axis, you know, it's time to double down before the prices skyrocket. You can plan between now and the end of the year. If you haven't done anything yet, contact us, let us guide you in this process. And like I said, I would always, always recommend 
away from directly away like some huge distance from the Dangote refinery to start investing in Ipechileki. And like I said, the other free trade zones they are residential. We have the um the northwest quadrant which is the where the Alara City is it is both for um residential mixed use and all other uses. So these places are going to really, 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 really explode. I will do different videos about the different free trade zone and understanding it because largely people think that there's just one free trade zone and there's this one picture <laughs> that people think that's free trade zone. But the Dangote refinery is actually a free trade zone. Then there are three other free trade zone areas. So you need to use this information and this let this information guide you so that's the update of the dangote refinery that's my, that's as much as i have today if you are interested in buying property or for more information for more inquiries contact us we're going to help you on your journey so thank you so very much for watching kindly like kindly share kindly subscribe kindly drop a comment tell me what you think and you know here at only home we believe that owning a home owning a property should not make you lose sleep so we are committed to giving you the very best property recommendations and insider real estate gist. This is Uche Philip Emodi from Only Home the NG, and I'll see you at the very next video. Bye bye.